hope I'm mm. visible. But because I'm in the lounge and the sunlight from all directions, so there's no way I can say it. <laughs> uh, no, it's fine. I can see you. Uh, you're, you're perfectly uh, visible. Yeah. Um, the sun. Um, uh, I'm not much. Uh, I'm good. Just, yeah. I, I needed to take like a quick shower. It's been a bit of a hectic day. So. Yeah. Nile is cut. Nile is cut. I'll charge you. Yeah. <laughs> I am judging you. <laughs> no, man. It's been a hectic day. Like, uh, I needed to take another shower just to um, get ready yeah. for the podcast. And also got sell um, after this at about six, uh, yeah, less than an hour. So, um, mm. needed to be ready for all of that. Yeah, no, makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. How have you been, though? I've been good. Um, I've been good. I can't complain. How have you been? I've been good. Like, yeah. just of exhaustion, I'm okay, man. I'm just tired. Like, yeah. <laughs> I am exhausted. Yeah, it's, it's been like, actually... It's maybe, I'm like, I'm tired. Yeah. But I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> no, man, it's been, a, it's been a hectic couple of weeks or a month, actually, recently. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and it's actually also we have to like apologize to um, all our viewers um, because they keep expecting new episodes every week, and we haven't been consistent in, in that department. So we are very very sorry uh, with that, but we'll do better. From the bottom of our heart. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm so tired. Even when I speak, like my voice disappears mid sentence. That's how tired yeah. I am. Like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> uh, no man, oh man, but it's all good. It's all good. Um, yeah, it's uh, we'll, we'll be fine. Yeah, we'll be fine. Definitely. Yeah, we'll be fine. With all the new music coming out, guys, we don't have a choice but to be fine. Yo, you know, actually, because um, I've been meaning to listen to, I've been meaning to listen to Kevin Momo's uh, new album, but I still haven't gotten the time. But it's like three hours. That's yeah. like a Quentin Tarantino movie. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. But one thing about Kevin Momo, guys, he'll give you one song that is like 16 minutes. Yeah. And you know what? The ones that are 15 minutes plus, they're always bangers. You don't even understand how. Like, how are you making a song good for that long? But yeah, now I listen to it. Besides me being in a Kevin Momo cult, yeah. uh, he's, he's just an amazing <laughs> artist. <laughs> no, because you're in the cult. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. You're in the cult. <laughs> There's yeah. no way. <laughs> yes, I, I didn't listen to it in one sitting. I feel like no one can, because yeah. even if you're a person who has amazing concentration span, you're going to zone out. Yeah. And therefore, because he, he has a lot of keys on his song. So it might sound like repetitive. So you might lose yourself in thinking it's still one song when it's not, yeah. you know? Yeah. But I listened to it when it dropped on Friday. Actually, when I woke up, my little sister around. 5.30 a.m., 6 a.m., she was playing it on TV. I'm like, there is no way. It's 6 a.m. in the morning. She was but already I, listening to it. I, I scolded her nice. I scolded her nice. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not playing Kobe Momo. I'm like, this is my work. This is yeah. my work. <laughs> but yeah, so I listened to it like in the first um, 30, no, 40 minutes. Yeah. I think I listened to like five songs, five, six songs. I enjoyed those. Then later on, when I was driving around running errands, I listened to Another part of it, then I think I only finished listening to it yesterday. Yesterday, yeah, yesterday. Then today, today I gave it a second spin, and honestly, I like it. I really love it. Like I have a few favorites on the song. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. I haven't been. I haven't had a chance to to listen to it. I actually, haven't had a chance to um, listen to a lot of new music, especially outside of hip hop recently. Uh, but yeah, yeah uh, I think from maybe from next week, um, I should be able to uh, to do that. Is there a particular song that actually stood out for you in the in the album? Mm, I have multiple. I like, honestly I have a few, like, and they're all different in their own right. Yeah, there's Imi Fula, which is like sixteen minutes long. Sixteen. Ten out of ten. Sixteen. Yes. One six. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it did the same Almost thing this, like, on the, the album. Yeah. I think the first album, it was Lately. Then on the second one, I think, I could be wrong. I think it was Treasure. I could be wrong. And now he gave us in the full last 16 minutes long. And it's just classic. Then there's also, Aisha, Aisha is amazing. Yeah. There's also, um, I think I'm Kulego. I could be wrong, but I think I'm Kulego. And 
there's remedy. Remedy is just keys, but it's flipping amazing, man. Yeah. There's mental on it. Is Kelvin signed to a, a major record label or is he on an independent label? I don't know. Hey. Hmm, actually, I've never checked that out. Yeah, because the reason I ask is because for someone to do such a long album, like three hours long, and have one song that is like 16 minutes long, mm -hmm. it's not very common as well for artists who are signed yeah. to, to labels because labels tend to um, box um, artists to say, would say, your album can't be too long or can't be yeah, uh, more than more than yeah yeah more more than this. So this is more like creative freedom for him um, to do yeah. his album, his music exactly the way that he wants to do it, the way yeah, he, he wants yeah wants uh, wants us to to hear it. And, and so that, that that's a good thing, and I think that's maybe one beautiful thing about uh, independent labels where. Yeah. You don't have to necessarily follow the guidelines of major major labels, especially if you have your own record label. You can just do it the way that you want to do it. And people want to listen to yeah. it will listen. If they don't, they don't. Yeah, you're right. Actually, I think he's not signed under anything. I see there's, there's Kelvin Momo Productions. Yeah, it could be his record label or whatever. Yeah. But I, I'm now I'm thinking about the time where he said he's going to drop and just woke up and felt like he's not dropping. I don't think you can get away with doing that if you're signed. Yeah, it depends. Unless they are the ones who are saying, don't don't release the album. Oh, yeah. I think with this one here, I'm Gelan, it was supposed to drop a while back, and it just kept on pushing it back, pushing it back. So much so, last week, I think on Tuesday, when he posted like the cover art, we all reposted it on our stories, but everyone was like, I... So what am I saying? Because yeah. <laughs> knowing Calvin, he might decide, decide to like, nah, I'm not doing this, you know? Yeah. So we were all like, we're gonna you know? Yeah, uh, it's a beautiful thing because I mean, if it's Kelvin Momo Productions, then it should be his own label, I think. Yeah. Um, and then probably has other labels like Sony or Universal, or whatever, yeah. doing like the distribution or whatever. Distribution, yeah. Yeah. yeah so it, it's a it's a beautiful thing, and that creative freedom um, for an artist, I think, is something that we all need to to see. Uh, we all need to experience where an artist does music the way that they want to do it, uh, which is why also Dr. Dre yeah. has been saying since um, since the early 2000s that he's dropping his album. <laughs> and still nothing. <laughs> you should everyone, because I, I don't think he'll ever receive it, but hey, if yeah. that happens, it might change. <laughs> I will see it. Yeah, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. But anyway, um this year actually we haven't even done like a proper introduction to today's episode we just started getting nah. into it yeah <laughs> but anyway this is the oracles welcome 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 to um the final episode um of the oracles in the year yeah. 2022 this is our last one um we'll be back we haven't decided yet when we'll be uh dropping a new one in january but yeah for this year this is let's just enjoy december uh, let's just enjoy yeah. the year uh, that was because it has been an incredible year. Yeah, it's been a very, yeah, very beautiful mean, year. It's like, it's like two weeks left of the year. I'm gonna say two weeks, left, but not exactly, but yeah, two and a half weeks. So the year is over. So we're gonna be back very soon. Yeah, I'll be back very, very soon. Um, and you know, I think we also need the the rest because I think the last uh, two or so months they showed. We see, you know what? Actually, uh, there's been a lot going on <laughs> um, with us not dropping yeah. um, as consistently as as we have been yeah. like since we started. But yeah, sure. um, looking back in for looking back at this year, uh, what has been mm -hmm. the highlight for you? Let's start. Let's start with the podcast before we go into um, pers your personal uh, life. Oh, and I think for me, it's you no, know, when you realize that actually nothing is impossible. Yeah. I think it's that thing because uh, as a person, you just, it's gonna, what I'm going to say right now is going to fall into my personal life. You know, as a person, you, there's so many things you don't do because of fear of the unknown, you know? Yeah. yeah. Or the lack, of, the lack of confidence or feeling like you're not good enough or whatever you're attempting to do is not going to take off. Like, there's a lot of things. And those things, actually get you to a place of happiness and success or they actually take you like they keep you where you are because I feel like once you try something you're not going to go steps backwards you're just going to stay there so the worst that can happen is staying there yeah. but the best that can happen is moving forward 
So I yeah. think for me, it was a matter of taking a leap of faith, man, and, and believing that whatever you want is possible. And you can actually get to experience more from just believing in that one thing. And for me, it was it was that. I decided, to, but I'm going to do this. I don't know what it's in store for me. I don't know how it's going to pan out. I don't know what doors are going to open, the opportunities I'm going to get, the people I'm going to meet. But I'm just going to trust the process. And I'm, I feel like a lot of things have helped have come out of this, not only entertainment-wise and being with certain industry people, but also yeah. personally, I feel like I've just garnered a lot of support from a lot of people. My confidence has grew tremendously and it's just been amazing, honestly. Yeah, because uh, a lot actually happened um, because I know that you actually got a new job. You left your old uh, job for a new one. Uh, yeah. and most recently, I don't know if you want me to say this, but most recently, you actually bought a new car as well. Congratulations <laughs> yeah, <did>. to you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm like, yeah. mm, that David order guy. <laughs> but hey. <laughs> but it's worth it, man. It's worth it. I feel like yeah. this year came with so, so many changes in my life. And, yeah. you know, when you see um, a person posting something like, six months from now, you'll be in a different space. Yeah, and when you current when you're in your current situation, you don't see the possibilities yeah. of that. Yeah, you, you yeah. might as well like ah, this person. I hate people who are always trying to be motivational or whatever. You just ignore it. You brush it off, you know. Yeah. Then that six that six months actually passes, and you look back and you're like, damn. Yeah. Actually, actually, it actually and did I, happen. Yeah, and I feel like for me that's been my life this year because. Before to tell you the things that I went through the first six months of the year, I myself don't even know how I made it out, you know? Yeah. You know, every single day, just in the, you know, if if the bottom had a basement, I was there, you know? Yeah. And now you're like, I, how am I where I'm at right now? And it looks like, like, actually, somebody did say that six months from now, things will be oh. different. Or you read somewhere yeah. that things can change. So I'm saying, one thing I feel like I've learned and I'll take away from this year is, your current situation is not your future. Yeah, a lot not. can happen. A lot can change. As long as you put your mind in the right space and you tell yourself, about, you know what, this is not the end. If yeah. I want to move, I'll move. For me, that's yeah. the biggest thing. Everything is possible. Yeah, that's very true. Um, that's very true. Because now I'm also looking at like um, at, at this entire year. Um, started this year at a community radio station. Um, mm -hmm. But a quarter way, almost a, almost halfway um, through it, um, I'm now at a commercial radio station um, at mm -hmm. Advisor FM. Also got a new job, basically. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And this year I went to Thingy, uh, what do you call, uh, back to the city for the very first mm -hmm. time, uh, which was an incredible experience. Yeah. Uh, Your experience <laughs> was top tier. Yeah. <laughs> Yours for yeah. a first timer. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it'll be better next year. Uh, but yeah, we'll, yeah but yeah, but we'll see. Um, you know, uh, what, what starting actually starting the podcast was a huge thing. Um, also for me, yeah. um, the people that we've spoken to, just to met, just to think, would we'll see, um, speaking to the likes of like Na Natasha Chansa, speaking to the likes of yeah. Jazz Harris. Um, and Jazz Harris is actually quite a big deal. Um, speaking to someone like Colin Wong one of the best worshippers um, in the country. Yeah. And it's actually, um, I think it's our best performing episode. Um, yeah. It has the, yeah, it yeah. has the most views. Um, you know, it's just been talking to, and, you know, actually also meeting, um, meeting Balisa as well, Balisa Muditam. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we, and we actually might have something uh, coming up next year uh, with her, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. we'll, we'll talk about that when the, when the time comes. Time. Yeah, 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 and you know, in I actually have to also thank two people uh, for for this next thing that I'm about to say. Um, <laughs> first, <laughs> uh, wish I could come down for that. Hey, I can't, guys. Yeah. I feel like it's my uh, win right now. I'm nah. so happy. <laughs> wow. Um, so earlier this year, because I started Rise at Rise FM in like April. Yeah, in in April. Yeah. And I met um I met some women bed. Um, she she does mm -hmm. like the the the, the mid mornings Monday to Friday, and like we because normally we have our meetings like our, our presenters meetings on every Wednesday, mm -hmm. 
So she's one of the people that I actually enjoy talking to. So whenever I arrive, I usually arrive while she's doing the show. So I get to spend mm -hmm. a bit of time with her, talking with her. And I think it was around uh, maybe June. Um, what's before June? May. Yeah, May or June, somewhere <laughs> there. Um, <laughs> when, uh, we were just talking and she yeah. was, yeah, and she just asked me like, dude, um, why aren't you a DJ? Or, yeah, and I told her, so actually, you know what? It's something that I actually want to learn. Um, and she just looked at me and said, Manil, it's something that you want to do. Um, why don't you start? Just just start now. What's stopping you? So it's something that I that I actually started to start. I started to learn. Um, I started learning from that point. And one person that actually helped me also to get around to learn around the decks and and everything that everything like that was uh, Sibo Pilsen. Um, Sibo actually mm -hmm. comes in after me on the on the weekend. Yeah. So she 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 taught me. Um, yeah, she taught me how, how to like work around the decks and and all of that. Uh, because she's also a yeah. DJ, so I asked her to mm -hmm. for help. And now, about yeah. six months down the line, uh, this coming Friday, um, I'm actually going to be sharing the stage with uh, Kabza, and <laughs> I'm going to be sharing the stage with Kabza and and Maporiza. And to think with that that is something that I didn't even think would happen. You know, it's not yeah. something yeah. that was anywhere. Um, in my thoughts, we'll see. Because no, yeah. um, Mpumi actually said, we'll see, dude, just start to learn now, and uh, so that by December you are ready. And mm -hmm. now it's December, I've already played like two events. Of, uh, was it last week or the, the weekend before? No, it was the first weekend of, of uh, December. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I played somewhere, uh, and even then, when I was playing there, I didn't know, we'll see, there was this event coming up, the ball. Or, uh, Scorpion mm -hmm. King Summer Tour. Um, and for me, I was actually looking to play at another event, but uh, Cabello, Cabello does Music Garden. Um, I don't know mm -hmm. if you heard about that uh, because they had it at the Soweto Barnyard and Maggi was playing there uh, sometime in November. But it's usually... I haven't. I must check it out. You know, yeah, because uh, I think they're trying to um, do it in different provinces as well. So they did it at the Soweto Barnyard um, uh, last month. So I was trying to play at um they are you know at, at the event that they're doing here at Nosbrate. Uh but uh Gabelo working with Bolo with Bukaza and not not he said no I'd actually rather play at the at the Scorpion King Summer Tour, which is something that mm. just blew my mind. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's, it, and it's a huge, huge thing. It's a huge platform. And I've been nervous since since the day that it called, mm -hmm. uh, which was like two weeks uh, like two weeks ago, I think. <laughs> breathe, breathe and pray yeah. about it. Breathe and yeah. pray about it. That's yeah, all. but yeah, I mean that that's all there is to it, you know. So yeah. I mean that that just pretty much uh, caps um, or pretty much uh, brings together uh, what the year uh, twenty twenty two was uh, at least for me. Yeah, and it's it's only it's only great things I believe from from here. So, because I know that from next year, those podcasts, the oracles, we're going to be doing um, amazing things. We're going to be doing big things. And we'll be talking to, actually, we'll be talking to people that people do not expect uh, for us to talk to, people yes. that they've forgotten about, uh, but we've actually mm -hmm. had a huge impact. But it's something that is coming. Naganjan. I mean, that could be a TV next year this time as well. Who knows? You, who knows, you know? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, who like, knows? whatever you whatever you want to do and you put your mind to it, I I, I believe go ahead, go, go for it, man. That's me yeah. for the next I don't know minute of my life, but that's me. Just go for it. Yeah, because you know the thing is, um what what I what I've all what I always uh believe or what I usually tell myself is that everything that you do you have to do with intention. Um <laughs> when, when you start something, you you say good this is what you want to do. It's not enough for you just to say, well, this is where you want to go, or this is what you want to do. But we have, yes. to, have to actually start. And in starting yes. and doing this thing, you have to do it with intention. We'll see, this is not yes. the, the end of it. This is not the beginning and the end of it. But this is where yes. I want to go. And that, that's the and that's the thing as well with uh, me being at Rise of Fame at the moment. Because mm -hmm. ever since I started at uh, ECAS doing, you know, at Community Radio, it wasn't me saying what's well, okay now i'm on radio um you know it's done i'm, I'm happy i'm happy here mm -hmm. and whatnot 
but it was to, for me to say it was every day that I'm here, every day that I do the show, every day um, that I do the news, every day, uh, whatever, that I'm that I'm at the station. I'm doing it because I have to grasp something from it. I have to grow each and every day yeah. because I have to be ready for, for the next step. And I wasn't yeah. entirely ready because I wasn't, I wasn't even expecting um, to be at Rise of Fame um, so soon. Yeah. But it happened, and now that I'm there, also I think I, I've got my uh, I, I'm 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 steady now, somewhat. But mm. also I'm doing it with the intention. to we'll see, um, this is not the end of it. We have to go. We have to go somewhere bigger. So every day that you do something, yeah. you have to be doing it that you learn and that you are preparing yourself for the next step. That's what I learned. That that I think has been my biggest lesson for for this year. You know? Yeah. And that's quite a mouthful, man. And I, I really feel like that lesson I also not only did teach you something, but also I feel like it is just to mentor the future for you. Yeah. Because now you're going to go into everything with that mentality. Yeah. Yeah. Because now I'm always ready to say, we'll see, everywhere I go, everything that I do, I have yeah. to, whether good or bad, yeah. it has to, some that's something, yeah, so, yeah, something. Um, has to be learned, and I have to do better um, at, at everything that I do. Now, it's so wild how life experiences can actually teach you so much about yourself. Mm. Not even about the surroundings, but just yourself. You look back like, this is not something I ever saw myself doing. This is not how I ever saw myself speaking, but here I am right now, speaking about things that have happened in my life and the way they happened and the lessons I have learned from it. Yeah. So well, man. Yeah, and also, you know, with um, after struggling for, for quite some time, trying to get something, trying to be somewhere, and failing over and over again, you actually, oh, yeah. well, what, once it starts happening, you, I, I, I realize, actually, I am deserving of, of all of this. I, have, I yeah. don't have to feel, I don't have to feel like um, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an imposter. Like the imposter syndrome should mm. not settle Literally, in. Literally. Uh, yeah, yes. it should not sit in. Like I am deserving of all of this. I am deserving of something better than, than what I had before. Um, so it's, mm. not, uh, it's not a case of me saying, okay, um, when is this go- all going to end? When am I, when am I mm. going back to, to that life that I used to live before? Yeah. Because I deserve to be here. And I deserve to to move forward and, and do better and be better. Um, you know, it's not what what I have is not just for somebody else or yeah. everybody else besides me. But yeah, I'm also yeah, part of yeah. those people who have who do deserve um, to get the things yeah. that I'm that I'm actually working for that I desire to have. Yeah, like you, you just touched a very sensitive topic for me because you know when you feel like you're not deserving of happiness yeah. for the longest time. You're so used to being sad and succumbing to your fears and failures yeah. and everything. Yeah, that when you start experiencing happiness, at the back of your head, there's always that thing saying, it's okay, last one. Something's yeah. going to happen. It's going ri- to rip the joy. So constantly, it's a fight that I have to deal with daily because I'm like, I'm actually deserving of this. I struggle for so many years. I've been unhappy for so many years. Why me being happy for two seconds is making me feel like it's wrong. But, you know? Yeah. I can feel like I don't deserve so much. So I, I took a step back and I'm like, should I really be celebrating my wins? And because when I celebrate them, I also low key feel like I'm rubbing it in people's faces when I'm not even doing that. But because I'm so used to, to losing and failing and everything else, it's like that's what people know me for. It's how people yeah. see me as seen me as being scared, seen me as being sad, and just you know, not a happy person. Now that when I am. It feels like I'm just rubbing my joy all over their faces. And it's something I'm struggling so much with. And it's something I need to work on. I'm like, you actually are deserving of this. You do deserve to be happy. You yeah. do deserve to be content and enjoying every single moment of your life. Mm. Yeah, because, I mean, just, just like everybody else who get the things that they that they work for, who get the things that they pray yeah. for, who get the things that they desire, we are part of those people. And we deserve also Definitely. to to feel that uh, the joy that uh, the joy and the happiness that uh, that lasts forever. It's not yeah. like a, a, a small yeah. dose that just that we just get yeah. every now and then, and then it goes away. 
I mean, a lack of disappointment and failure is is not is not us. It's not who we are. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's not for us. Uh, for us, it's success. It is joy. It is it is prosperity. And I yeah. believe that that is uh, where we are at the moment. And it's only going to get better from here. As I should, I think for us, the biggest thing we need to do is think thoughts of eternal happiness and not just happiness for a moment. You know. Yeah. I think it's just knowing but no I deserve to be happy and I'll be happy for the rest of my life. Yeah. It's just the one thing I feel like we need to work on. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It really is. Um but anyway, <laughs> uh but let, let me let me ask you about um uh, some of our previous uh, episodes that we've done, especially the interviews. Um what which one would you say was your absolute favorite this year? One not you putting me under pressure like I was <laughs> under pressure. <laughs> You're not gonna do that. Um, okay, let, let's say I, I, uh, top five. Top five. Okay, I can give you yeah. a top five. All right. Um, Oli was one of them. Oli was amazing. Like you know how spiritual I am, and that for me, yeah. amazing. Oli was amazing. Um, Pastor Lungi Dala as well, amazing. Loved it. Yeah. I enjoyed um, Touchline. Yeah. Not because I'm a Tesla fan, but genuinely enjoy that. And apparently, I'm, I'm very timid in interviews. I don't know why, but a lot of people say, then they're very hardcore off camera. Like, the things you say about people's music <laughs> and their artistry, we expect to see that on the podcast. The podcast yeah. Some way or another, you just sit back and relax and become timid. Why aren't you as, <laughs> you know, as raw as you are when you're with us? But then, I don't know. I feel like I am. I don't know what more I'm going to say. Yeah. yeah, I enjoyed Touchline, I enjoyed P Dot, and I also enjoyed I think Dev was amazing. I and mean, I feel like it gave me a fresh perspective from outside the country. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Jazz. Yeah, Jazz was amazing. One of my faves actually. All right. Oh, no, and Elijah. Awesome. Oh, Elijah was amazing. Yeah. I'll give was you six. It? Elijah was amazing. Yeah. Was <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I don't know I'll if you yeah, I don't I don't know if you noticed, but they also released like a, a new album um called Midnight. Uh let me let me just check. Uh um, I saw it, but I haven't listened to you know how Spotify they work with the music taste and what you listen to oh, yeah. course, then they bring it back. Yeah. Yeah. I saw it. I'm like, mm, that's so nice. So nice. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't called... given it some time. Yeah, it's called Midnight Summer. I actually listened to it on my way back from um on my way back to Northbridge from from back to the city. Um I actually enjoyed it. It was it was a good ride. Really? Um, yeah, it yeah. was a good ride listening to it. But it's like it's actually more like an EP. Yeah, because it's like seven songs mm -hmm. on there. Yeah. So but uh, I really did okay. enjoy it. Yeah. Um but for me, um, uh, because in no particular order, it's very difficult to um uh, to have a specific order uh, of, of these guys yeah, these interviews but uh Colin Mwango definitely um up there mm -hmm. um Elijah as well um uh, is way up there uh P dot uh, very is a very honest guy very open guy um I, I, I enjoyed that, that one five. yeah 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 uh, I enjoyed that one I enjoyed the the our conversation with Alisa as well um that, oh, yeah. that yeah that was that was great um who else um i think because now it's difficult to actually put uh this one um but i would say yo okay this fifth one <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I understand one. where you're coming from because I feel like all of these interviews or oh, the yeah. recordings that we did I feel like they all filled up the space differently yeah. they yeah. all put you in a certain space in a different way you got to see Opidot like, I've I met Opidot before right? and I've always said but that guy is actually a very short guy but if you yeah. don't know him like that or if you've never met him you would think he's very close off you, you would think is a don't talk to me kind of person and yeah. he, he's not he's, this guy is actually an actor even he believes in theater he's amazing and he loves fooling around you know yeah so he gets to see people in that space and like actually you, you're not yeah. like that so i feel like it it got us to get people to open up 
and seeing yeah. them in a different light than they are when they're in studio or doing either formal interviews or when they or when they release music. Yeah, yeah, that very true, um, very true. Because what what P dot is actually you you get what you did not expect, uh, from yeah. him, and it's a good thing. Um, it's yeah. it's a very very good thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I've decided actually on the on the fifth one, and I think mm. it would be hype. I actually enjoy talking talking with hype mm. as well. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that one that one was also great. Yeah, uh, and you know, actually listening to to his music, um, I mm. get uh, that. I mean, although I know that we believe in everyone that we actually that mm-hmm. we talk to, um, everyone has been amazing. Now, oh, Pastor Lugin Dad is also very close because now is is one of the ones. I loved it. Yeah, because I was uh, a bit conflicted about who, who I mm-hmm. put in the top five between him and Hype. Now, um, but with Hype, you can get because he he's got that sort of nas uh, kind of thing where he's going to be big, but I don't think mm-hmm. that he's going to be um, celebrated like he should be. Yes. Yeah. Because it's going to take Definitely. a while for him to to be uh, to get the recognition that he that he rightfully deserves. Even though he's going to get some uh, a lot, it's going mm-hmm. to achieve a lot of great success. Um, but are, I yeah. feel like he's not going to um, get the recognition that he rightfully rightfully deserves. But he's just yeah. an incredible guy, man. He's an incredible guy. You're right. You're right. Actually, you know, when I think back to that interview, like I read a lot when I have time, and I think. It's all what I'm going to say, and I, it also explains why I don't watch movies, especially yeah. after I read a book. Because if I read a book, in my head, there's already pictures. I've made up scenarios. I know how the setting is like. The people I'm reading about, I have made them up in my head, right? Yeah. And that's the reason why I don't watch movies after I've read a book, because I always get disappointed. <laughs> it's always the opposite of what I want. And I'm like, um, okay, what the hell? What I'm yeah. speaking to here is, one thing about hype, speaking to hype, Throughout that interview, I wasn't an essay mentally. Oh, yeah. Like, he was yeah. able to place me where he's at but, with yeah. his music from the time he started to where he's at. Now, I, I could literally see the streets of Brooklyn to the streets of New York constantly in my head. I'm like, I'm not here. But, uh, yeah. That's why I get where, where you're coming from with that interview. It, it, it took me to a different space. Yeah, because, I mean, he naturally, he's a storyteller. And, yeah. you know, he, he's a storyteller. He's had a lot of experiences. I mean, starting his life off in Cameroon, even though he doesn't really remember much from that, but remember even though he does did. not remember much from, from the time when he was in Cameroon, uh, but still, it still sticks with you. It's still part of his subconscious, you know, and then yeah. moved to Canada and then from Canada and moved to the U.S. in in, in Atlanta, sorry. Um, and mm-hmm. you know, for him to to take all of those experiences, to take all of that together uh, and bring it together, and actually yeah. tell his story through oh, sure. through music, it's it's just an incredible it's just incredible because as he speaks, he actually also has like pictures in his mind, uh, in in his mind, like he sees exactly what he's talking about. He's able to mm-hmm. um, to to place everything together. It's almost like a some sort of puzzle, I guess. Um, where he knows yeah. so from here, this is where he's going, and from there, that's where he, that's where he, he he'll go. Um, it, it's just yeah. it's just it's just got a like a a beautiful mind, I guess. A very yeah. very beautiful mind. Yeah. Like I think as touching on that interview right now, it actually made me think back to um, Touch's interview. Yeah. That's one thing he also did. I feel like Touch. Maybe that's why I enjoy him so much as an artist. He's a storyteller. And yeah. whenever you listen to touch rap, you have images in your head. Yeah. Constantly. Like, I've tried to, like, no, I just, like, no, that listen to the song, just jam. But in my head, automatically, if, like, there's kids in the in the song, where it's, like, it's an audio at the back, in my head, I can see the kids. I can see the kids that he's speaking to. I can yeah. see him speaking to his mom or him buying the old car that he said he bought. Like, everything he says in my head is just replaying. Yeah. And, I've just I've come to realize that I feel like that's the another main reason I fell in love with hip hop initially because of the storytelling. I could the way they would tell a story, I could literally see it playing in front of my eyes. Mm. And one thing about music that I appreciate is that it makes me go deep into 
not only the, the penmanship, but artistry and the ability of someone to tell a story and actually you being in there with it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, hip hop is one of the best genres, um, I believe, when it comes to yeah. telling stories, when it comes to storytelling. Yeah. And more especially because with, with the way that the stories are told, you never really um, expect it from young black people to yeah. tell stories, such beautiful stories, okay, um, more especially yeah. in such a very uh, short time. And in the way yeah. that they tell it, they tell it through music, they tell it through um, to, through rhyming. Um, they, they just create pictures in your head um, just by listening to them. And also, it also all goes down to the, to the beat selection as well. For for someone to be able to to select such a such a wonderful beat, such a good beat that actually goes with the story that they're telling, it's almost like a like creating a movie and then yeah. adding a score on top of it, um, so that it creates yeah. this sort of uh, environment um, for for you, the listener. It's just it's just beautiful. I mean, young black kids, because we have to yeah. also remember, we see uh, with, with with rap. A lot of the artists, they are very, very young. We're talking about people yeah. in their twenties, most of them. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you listen to to these guys, like um, you can go back to to the likes of Tupac and, and Biggie. Um, these guys were in their early to mid twenties. I mean, Biggie mm -hmm. died when he was like twenty four, I think. Uh, Tupac yeah. died when he was twenty five. And look at the impact that they had with the stories that they were telling yeah. through through their music. And it wasn't just one album. It wasn't just one year that they did this. Yeah. It was for five, four or five years that they've been doing this. So these are people, since, they, since they're teens, they've been told, telling the stories. And they've had yeah. an impact for, for so many years, almost 30 years since they both passed. Yeah, um, yeah we're, we're getting close day. to 30 years. And to this day, it yeah. still makes sense what, what, they, were, what they were saying. Yeah. You play a Tupac song right now, and everyone is just in a zone that you can't even explain. Yeah, People yeah. lose their minds, you know? Yeah, and these stories still make sense today. They still exactly. make sense today. That, and it goes to show that uh, as much as the world changes, it's still also the very same. It still doesn't it's change. Yeah. yeah, it still doesn't Only change. Only good music will last. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's only good music that will last. Um, yeah, but anyway, uh, Z, we are almost out of time. Um, I don't know if you have anything else to, to share with us. No, I just need to get to new music. I need to, okay, I listened to Touch, um, Touch Lines soon to Deluxe. Yeah. And I have a few favorites there as well. I like Matala, I like Ermita. One thing about the guy's penmanship, it's amazing. And I don't like using the word underrated, but he's one of those, unfortunately. And I, but I feel like with time, Everything is going to happen, you know. You know how yeah. I always used to tell that I believed in Big Zulu because I saw something in him. He yeah. came now and he's gone, you know. So personally, I really feel like Touchline is going to be the same person. He's going to be gone. And another yeah. person who's actually gone is a gone guy, but locally he's not appreciated much. And um, Bargo Deep. Bargo Deep is amazing. Bargo, that yeah. Gets both, yeah. He gets both in Munich, he gets both everywhere, but in less here, you know. I think he's also the one person who sees what we see or who hears what we hear in music. So yeah. you can hear a good thing. And I feel like that's the kind of person he is. That's why he's able to, like, no, I'll stick with the sound, I'll move with it, and I'll be good. So I'm looking forward to listening to the new guys. I'm going to spend probably the whole week listening to them while I'm working because I'm trying to multitask. But yeah, that's all for me, man. I'm looking forward to good music and ending off the year on a good note. Yeah, um, because I'm having a difficult time um listening to new music i'm still in my mind i'm still preparing for friday um for my set on friday so i'm still <laughs> trying to get like the perfect set yeah. uh for then but any any good music uh new music rather um is going to be for for, for next week yeah and good luck yeah. for friday please kill it yeah. represent us yeah. <laughs> no definitely <laughs> Definitely. Um, I will definitely uh, do my best on Friday. Uh, definitely will kill it. Um, yeah. yeah, because I'm still kind of nervous. Uh, um, and, you know, this is actually the first time. Uh, okay, I mean, I haven't been a DJ for very long, but this is the first time that I actually hear yeah, with the DJs um, going for like a, a sound check. 
uh, which we'll be doing on, on Thursday. So I'm looking forward to that as well yeah. to see what, what's going to be happening. So I'm a firm believer of sound text, guys. Please do sound text. Yeah. Like if you can. Yes, I know there are DJs who are all over the place and they can't make sound text because they're traveling yeah. throughout the world or the country. But yeah. I really am a firm believer of it because when I was at also on Saturday, yeah, one of my friends is a DJ and DJ from OK Malum Kukat. And I was speaking to him on Friday to so he left. It's like, it's, I'm trying so hard to make sure that we we do sound check for every sure. gig that we go to. So even if it means we get to the province like a few hours early, it's really? fine. But al- although we can't do that too, with all of them, because there are times where they're getting in from Malanga, they're getting in Durban, and they're yeah. getting in Gauteng in the same night. You know, there are times where you can't make it. But I feel like when you do, when you have the chance, do make it, because it, it can actually make or break a set. Yeah, because it's uh, if you can actually, if, if whenever possible, yeah. to 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 do a sound check, um, it's very yeah. very important that you that you do it, especially for guys like uh, and you know actually uh, another thing that happened this year is my mind being changed about uh, live bands with with uh, with rap artists um, mm-hmm. after seeing AKA with with his with his band. <laughs> and having backup singers at, at yeah. back to the city, yeah. Um, it just showed you see if you actually do it right, if you Take have like a right. very Take solid, yeah, if you have a very solid team with you, you can actually yeah. do have an have an incredible show. Um, sure. with them, I, yeah, I don't know if they actually did do a sound check, but they sounded amazing on the night. They sounded perfect. They there were did. no issues. Yeah. Yeah, they did the I, I think him and a few others because on, on Friday a lot of them were I couldn't count during the soundcheck and Kenan yeah. was one of them and okay. I can see how how, like, how big of a role it plays yeah because that's how, and mind you now when it's the main show there's over 15,000 people there a lot can go around well, even yeah. the sound itself can become distorted but it was amazing yeah simply it, because it they got they got the important things right yeah uh, it really it really sounded amazing uh, but yeah, um, anyway, um, this is uh, all from us for this year uh, on the Oracles. Yeah. We will be back again sometime in January. I don't know if it's going to be the first or the second week, but <laughs> somewhere around there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, somewhere around there, we will be ready. And we promise to try and give you 52, uh, at least 52 episodes. It was like 52 <laughs> yeah. uh, weeks Week. in a year. Yeah. yeah. So if we have to, sometimes we'll probably have to do like two episodes uh, per week. Uh, yeah. But we, we'll definitely um, do the best that we can to give you at least 52 um, episodes yeah. next year. And all of them will be on time. Um, that's, yes. yeah, yeah. And that, we'll that, try have, I'm a piano artist. We will we'll try. try. Yeah, we will try. Actually, uh, we'll I actually... believe in the Yanos, guys. I believe in yeah. the Yanos. <laughs> no, like would... They gave a break to so many artists. Like yeah, they they have... Right now, people are eating because of my piano. Lives yeah. have been changed. Homes have been built because of my piano. And it's yeah. like, that's one thing I, as a country we shouldn't lose. You know, we're yeah. very good when it comes to sound, guys. We gave the, the world quite to, we gave the, the, the world the, the house, that deep house that we have. And yeah. now we're giving them a piano, and I feel like we just need to nurture it, you know? Not yeah, that um, we must be gatekeepers of it, but nurture it and keep it close. This is our thing, and we just need to take it higher and higher, you know? Yeah, I mean, my, my hope is that because I'm a piano actually has potential to be one of the biggest um, uh, biggest GDPs that we have in, yes. in the country. Yeah, yes. we have contributors right. to the GDP, yes. um, more especially yes. in the tourism sector. Because yeah, I believe if you, can, yeah, if yeah, you can have like uh, a huge concert um, of Yama Piano, something like Afrofest that is happening in, um, I think in Portugal, but actually yeah. happening happening in South Africa. I mean, um, when you actually think of, about yeah. it, yeah, when you think about it, actually Cape Town and uh, Durban, but I think more more Cape Town uh, because Cape Town is I think the friendliest uh, city when it comes to uh, tourism. But, or they can even mm-hmm. do it because I think the Northern Cape also has a as a beach somewhere. Uh, people tend to forget about the Northern Cape. Um, they do, also and it's made... very amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I put. I, I put. Actually, I believe would say maybe the Northern Cape would actually um, the coast of the Northern Cape would actually make like a, a credible venue, um, a credible place. So hopefully we get to see 
huge amount of piano concerts happening that will bring tourism okay. into the country. Yeah. Um, the, and I also hope, let's see, as much as Ama Piano has been labeled as a poverty killer, um, hopefully these these kids are, are saving their money. Hopefully they are investing yeah. their money. Um, and it's not just going to alcohol and clothes. Not and, just pushing and, Diamond Walk. Yeah, not just. Yeah. Say, don't go, Diamond Walk. Go, yeah. guys, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna express if I get money. I'm lending for Diamond Walk. Yeah. Not Diamond Walk. You know? <laughs> go. It's fine. It's fine. Let that not be the only thing that you do yeah. with the money. Yeah. They're getting a lot of money. They, they, they are. They're making. They're making lots of money. They're making millions. Yeah. Um, of of brands. Yeah. The, these guys. And hopefully they are spending the money wisely. Yeah. They, they are. They are having uh, multiple sources of income um, outside of yeah. music. Um, that is I going to keep like... them going because I mean, music is seasonal. Um, your time is, in, in, in this industry yeah. it is seasonal for pretty much everyone. Even so yeah. when you're hot, make sure we we'll see you make get as much money it. as you can. Um, yeah. You do not tire yourself. You do not exhaust yourself. Um, you rest, so. Please, yeah, rest. Take important. care of yourself. You yeah, yeah, and yeah, and take care of yourself um, emotionally. Yeah. Um, spiritually, financially, physically, everything. Mentally, um, everything yeah. So yeah. yeah. So by the time when your the the hype dies dies down around your name, you at least you okay. keep the lifestyle that you've been living yeah. um, when you are hot. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, that that I mean that that's my desire for for these guys. Yeah. Um, so I think for yeah. me that's what I will leave the people with the street like today and this year. Honestly, yeah. just take care of yourself, man. Yeah. Like, I know I'm a fine one to talk because I'm I'm still slowly learning to <laughs> take care of myself Jobless and rest, yeah. you know. Yeah, but the thing is important because burning out, like a burnout is a real thing. You can feel, you know, when you're so tired, you just want to weep. You just want to yeah. cry. Yeah. You know, it's like it's going to help, but you know it won't. Sometimes I feel like everyone should take a step back. When you feel like everything is becoming a lot and you're feeling overwhelmed, take a step back. Yeah, it's okay to back. relax, release, and realign. Then come back with power, you know. Yeah, and another and thing is. Yeah, another thing: never be afraid to lose everything, um, everything yes. that you have, because once that fear comes in of losing everything, yeah. then um, you will that's lose it. yeah, yeah, you will lose it, yeah. and you will put yourself in a position um, where you have to compromise on your morals, you have to compromise yeah. on the person that you are, and True. that even if you do not lose everything, but you're going to lose yourself. And yeah, every, yeah. like material yeah. things, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I'm material things, can, yeah, yeah, material things can always, I mean, money can always be made. Um, there's more yeah. than enough money in this world, Malia, um, Malia, guys, Malia, yeah. Buya, but yourself, you know, yeah, once but you, one, once you lose yourself, you're gone, late and it's late, you know, yeah, once yeah. you lose yourself, yeah. you're gone. So, never be afraid to lose, um, anything that you work worked for because everything mm-hmm. that is yours. Um, that you actually did work for, that is yours, that you oh, earned. Well, yeah, yeah you, you cannot lose that. You cannot lose that. So never sell, sell yourself, never sell your soul. Um, you'll always be loved. You'll always be good. Um, just keep yeah. taking care of yourself. I mean, I believe in the secret. Um, the, the universe is a genie and it says the wish is my command. Whatever yeah. you think about the most, whatever you project into the universe, you're going to get more of that. Yeah. So thinking thoughts of like, of uncertainty of sadness and just being helpless, you will attract that. So just attract, think about positivity, think about prosperity, about happiness in every sense of the word and rest and mental health. You will attract all of that. No, definitely. But yeah, we'll 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 we'll, we'll be back again um in January. Um Z. Thank you very much. We will, yeah. So uh, that is it from the oracles uh, for for this year. We will be back yeah. again in January. Um, have a great December. Take care of yourself, and we'll see you again uh, next year. Cheers. Yep. And I have no shedding now. Right. <laughs> As a country, right. oh. <laughs> oh, it's really, really bad. It's really bad. Oh. Hopefully, hopefully like, I have January. Yes, okay. but then I just hate this whole thing.